Hello and welcome to the Close Stop Culture Podcast. I am James Prestridge and as always I'm joined by Anna Mayers. Anna, how are you doing? I am doing okay. Um, I have been trying to stay creative, stay positive. I have made a skirt out of a plaid shirt which fills me with joy because it was originally going to be a dress and then I was just too big for it but I made it into a skirt so that makes me happy. I have challenged myself to try and make a short film just on my own like literally with no one else um so yeah it's quite fun trying to figure out ways to stay creative and do what we like to do but on our own slash with limited resources and limited locations so that's what I've been doing as well as apparently having the strangest dreams but we're just we're just going with it we're just going with it (laughs) what about you James what have you been doing well, I just spilt my drink everywhere, so oh, that's, no. one thing, <laughs> that's one thing I've been doing. No, oh nothing to report on my end. Again, crazy dreams as well, but nothing particularly exciting. One of the most exciting things I've done is trying to work out my picks for the concept we've got for today's podcast. We're doing something a little bit different. And Anna, would you like to explain what we're doing? So for today's challenge, we have been given, well, I wish, we have been given $15 million to build a film. There are five brackets, each containing five options, each one worth either $1 million, $2 million, $3 million, $4 million, or $5 million. And we have to choose someone from each bracket to build this film, but obviously we have to remember that we only have a certain amount of money to do it with. So you can't have a $5 million person from each bracket, which is a bit annoying, but obviously that makes it more exciting and funny to see what we've come up with and who is available to us in each section. I hope that makes sense. And we'll be posting graphics so you can build your own if you look on the Instagram Closer Culture page. But yeah, we'll talk you through our choices and hopefully we can make some good films. Yes, this could get pretty wild. I know some of my picks are kind of out there. So let's see how it goes. The first category we have, the first genre of movie we've got to build is an action movie. Okay, so what do you want, how do you want to do this? Do you want to run through each bracket and then pick? Or do you want to run through all the brackets and then pick and explain why we I pick? I think maybe if we go through each bracket and then who we've picked, and then yep. at the end we go through explain what our, our movie. idea is. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, awesome. So for the first bracket of the action movie genre, we have retro stars. So we should say as well, we're picking people at their peak. So, for instance, if you were doing Alfred Hitchcock, you'd pick him as he'd made Vertigo. Although Alfred Hitchcock pretty much peaked throughout his whole career. So that's maybe a bad example. But you can you can pick them in your peak or maybe if you really wish, you can have them at another stage of their career. But we are thinking you can have them whenever you want. This is a real fantasy draft. Okay, so for bracket one of the action movie, we have retro stars. For five million, you can have Sylvester Stallone. For four million, you can have Arnold Schwarzenegger. For three million, you can have Sigourney Weaver. For two million, you can have Chuck Norris. And for one million, you can go for the cheap option, which is Hulk Hogan. Anna, what did you pick? Um, I put all my money into Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> okay, interesting. Do you want to give a reason now or do you want to wait till the end? Um, well, I, I really enjoy coming up with film concept ideas. So my vision was just, well, that's it. It's a fantasy thing. We can have them whenever we want. And I want to see a bit like we're getting kind of Clint Eastwood films where he is an old man and he's embracing that and... He is an 80-year-old drug mule and stuff like that. I have Sylvester Stallone as an old guy. He's a mafia boss and he's getting a bit old. So he's still doing what we <laughs> know and love him for. But he is I, the age he is today rather than him at peak. But that is part of my story. Um, so, yeah, that that's why I chose him. Interesting. And I actually think old age Stallone is actually done some quite good stuff. I really enjoyed a film called Escape Plan, which mm-hmm. he did with Arnie, and his work in Creed as well, where Rocky is no longer being able to get in the ring, a little bit more worn down, obviously, minor spoiler alerts, has cancer in the first Creed film. So he's done some really good stuff, actually. So I'm interested to hear the rest of your plan there. I've gone for Sigourney Weaver, P. 
peak alien Sigourney Weaver. I'll explain later. Does she have her like curly oh. beautiful hair? Oh, I know this film's coming out in 2020, but she has the big frizz. Oh, thank thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bracket number two are more current day stars. So for five million, you can have Tom Cruise. For four million, you can have Charlize Theron. For three million, you can have Keanu Reeves. For two million, you can have Vin Diesel. And for one million, you can have Jaden Smith. <laughs> I'm sure he's a great actor, but he hasn't had the best run so far with action movies like Ender's Game. Um, so that's why he's one million. <laughs> Do you want to guess who I've picked, James? Vin Diesel. No, I've gone for Jaden himself. Oh, yes. <laughs> we have gone from five million to the other end of the scale. Um, I, I want to give him a shot. And the way I'm picturing this film, he currently has pink hair, as, as far as I know. So I'm just picturing like this um kid when i say kid he's like i don't know 20 whatever um kind of the complete opposite to sylvester stallone and i just think that's such a cool kind of playoff and i'll explain the film when we've read all the brackets out but um i just like the kind of complete opposite of each other facing each other in a film i can yeah i can already see your film taking form here very interesting did I say my pick? No. <laughs> <laughs> my pick is Keanu Reeves. And I think I love his work in John Wick. So I feel I wanted someone in there who's real legitimate action star, can do all the combat stuff by himself, can do very elaborate action scenes, execute them to perfection. So I wanted him in there. I mean, Tom Cruise would have been similar, but it's just too expensive. So I went with Keanu here. The next bracket are baddies. So I try to pick a few people who have been baddies in action movies, and then there's a couple in here that are more jokey oh, ones. Oh, no! I read the wrong bracket. I, I was like, i chose chosen for my baddie, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> oh, no! And I was like, how can he be in two brackets? And I've just reread the bracket, and he's not. So, oh, no, I'm just going to have to go with who is that price, because I'm not going to change the others. Okay. So let me just write that down. <laughs> <laughs> that changes things. I mean, they, d they don't necessarily have to be the baddie in your film if you don't wish them to be, but no, I've written them. The baddie. I'll work around it. Sorry, please, please read out the, the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so for five, you can have Heath Ledger. For four, you can have Javier Bardem. For three, you can have Lucy Liu. For two, you can have Nicolas Cage. And for one... You can have Tommy Wiseau from The Room. So a real eclectic bunch here. Anna, what have you picked? Um, well, I have picked um, the $3 million option, who was Keanu Reeves, but obviously <laughs> not anymore. And I have Lucy Liu. Um, I'm actually quite happy with that. Actually, when I was looking at them, I was thinking of this film I want to create and who would suit best. Um, and actually, I feel that Lucy will do a good job for the option I've chosen. I am just going over my um, film brief so that um, she has her has her say in how she's a baddie in, in my film universe. I've actually gone with Lucy Liu as well. I, again, wanted someone who can mix it up with actual mix, mixed martial arts and can do the combat style and can be very believable. And I do feel like films like The Raid and John Wick have really raised the standard for what we're going to see on screen with action movies and combat. And Lucy Liu is someone who can keep up with that. She proved, obviously, in especially in Kill Bill, that she can really do an intense, non-stop, fast-paced action style. Definitely, that was an easy choice for me, to be honest. Okay, the fourth bracket here, we've got to pick a choreographer for our fight scene. For five million, you can have Bruce Lee. For four million, you can have Iko Uais, who's from the Raid movies. For three million, you can have Jackie Chan. For two million, you can have Shia LaBeouf. And for one million, you can have Charlie Sheen. So obviously towards the end there, you're getting really erratic people there choosing your fight scenes. Anna, did you go for an erratic choice or did you go for the proven 
action stars? I, I went erratic and I have gone with Shia LaBeouf for two million. <laughs> I just, again, for my film, I just love the idea of like, um, just Jaden not knowing anything and just trying to like, like, come on then and like, I don't know, do a Shia LaBeouf style like shoulder wiggle and like, I don't know, like just be a, a weenie little boy compared to all these bigger people who I think Shia would speak to and be like, right, I, I feel you know what you're doing, but I would just like just a bit of flair, a bit of excitement. Um, so I think that as well with who I've chosen as a director, it is going to be quite a stylized movie. Like, you know who has made this. But um, I think Shia LaBeouf for, for this film is a, a good choice. And with the money I had, I'm sure he's going to do an all right job. Fingers I, crossed. I think we're going to have really contrasting movies here. I've <laughs> gone for Jackie Chan, three million. I know Jackie Chan's had a bit of a comedy career as well, but he does have legitimate mixed martial arts background so i do trust him and i think the people that i've picked to really be the driving forces behind my intensive action style of this movie already have a lot of experience so they would be able to bring their own stuff to the table as well bracket number five director okay five we have michael bay four million we have john woo three million we have Catherine bigelow two million we have amy schumer and one million, we have Paris Hilton. I'm guessing you didn't go for Schumer or Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. Um, I went with John Woo. Um, I think his style is is so so cool. Um, and again, with me saying I want kind of more stylized stuff, um, I, I think that he was the right option. And I had four million left, so I was very happy. Yes, I had three million left, so I went with Catherine Bigelow. Obviously, she did incredible action film work in her early work and in her early career. And also, she knows how to do suspense as well. So I feel like I'd have a really... I'd have a director here who understands style and understands how to create atmosphere in a film as well. So I was really happy with my picks here. Anna, would you like to explain your fantasy action movie to us? I will, I will, and there will be spoilers, so please be prepared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and okay. if you want to sell the rights to this movie, <laughs> you can't give it all away. <laughs> um, what I'll do is read out what I've written, which is kind of a, a small synopsis, and then I'll just add in a few details about each person who I've chosen. Um, so we have uh, Sylvester playing a mafia boss. Um, he is 72 in real life, um, so he's not old, old. But I imagine him getting a bit old and he's out shopping and he, he falls over and needs a bit of help when Jaden comes to help him. And I like this idea of Jaden being, I don't know, in a, a modern day gang doing drugs and selling and whatever. So when he comes across Sylvester and he helps him back into his home and he sees that, no, this is the real deal. Like I, me and my mates, we're just messing around. This guy is the real deal. Um Jaden says that he'll help Sly out and be on his side and uh, whether he needs his shopping and doing getting some milk or needs assistance, whatever he needs doing, um, if he will help him get revenge on the baddie Lucy Lou. So basically, Jaden is from a, a poorer background. Um, Lucy and Jaden's mother went to school together and Jaden's mother had this fantastic business idea. However, Lucy stole it and she's now rich and has the power and the money and obviously the business is flourishing but obviously that leaves Jaden's family penniless and he hates that so we have some like sick slow motion fights and standoffs all with a shy of flair I just want to point out that he has a lot of say I feel in this um, and we see Jaden and Sylvester grow close and we are all nearly crying together when sadly Lucy does kill Sylvester but we are crying tears of complete happiness and joy when we see Jaden, the pink hair beauty boy who has been taught so well by his mentor. He finally beats the woman he hates and his mother can steal the business back. There we go. That was an emotional journey. Holy crap. I feel with action movies, they're all very similar. Like they're all not boring, but it's like, Someone wants revenge, something bad happens, and then they get, like, justice, whatever. Um, so I was just, like, trying to be a bit fun with kind of where the actors are currently rather than at peak and stuff. 
and I think it's so interesting would be so interesting to see the kind of I don't know cowboy style shoot offs or even if Lucy Liu had a samurai sword that would be sick and Jaden's just stood there like oh dear <laughs> I don't know what to do right now um and then somehow through the the shire just taking over he he somehow learns from Sylvester how to how to win I just think it's a, a cool idea I really like your concept. I do just worry about Shia because he could completely take over this movie and you could have Jaden doing some absolutely batshit crazy stuff and there's yeah. nothing you can do about it because he's choreographing stuff. <laughs> so you've got like Jaden like with nunchucks and he doesn't know how to use them but Shia's like, that's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah, intensity. That's what yeah. I w- would see him being like. But that's it. I think that that's part of it, that Jaden doesn't know. And he's trying to be this cool, hip, young gangster. But actually, he doesn't know what he's doing. And he is a bit of an idiot. So, like you said, we have Shia teaching him. But obviously, with Lucy and Sylvester, they, they know what they're doing. They can say, OK, Shia, yeah, whatever you say. But then be doing their own stuff. Um, but I just I just think it's funny, the idea of Jaden embodying Shire and just going absolutely mental but somehow still getting revenge <laughs> <laughs> so I thought very similar to you that action movie plots are better when they're just or usually better when they're very simple revenge stories and I, obviously I had uh, the raid and John Wick in my head at the forefront of my mind when I was coming up with this concept so I thought in the John Wick movies the revenge is as simple as someone kills his dog i thought this could be a very simple revenge story but i have sigourney weaver and keanu reeves as a husband and wife team wow. and their child gets taken so we've got a little bit of a john wick stroke taken vibe in here and they both vow to get their child back so they're sent on this journey to try and find out where their child is they come up against all these action foes and they eventually track it down to lucy Lou. And we have this big confrontation, but I have a massive twist in my film, okay? Yeah. This is where is it could it? go a bit M. Night Shyamalan, and people could say this film has been ruined. Keanu Reeves is actually on Lucy Liu's side, and so he turns on Sigourney Weaver's character, and that's the final fight. It's Sigourney Weaver against Keanu. That's my movie, with a big, ridiculous twist at the end, but that's it. I love that. Oh, my God. Do we know who wins? Oh, Sigourney wins. Sigourney wins, but oh, it's geez. a bloody intense fight at the end. Um, like I say, I wanted my film to be extremely action-heavy, a lot of fighting going on, a lot of elaborately choreographed scenes. Hopefully Jackie can burden those and not throw in too much comedy. I don't want too much comedy in there. And I really wanted as well Catherine Bigelow for the thriller aspects of the film. I want there to be teasers that Keanu maybe isn't who he is. And it's going to be one of those where it comes together and you think, oh, yeah, it all makes sense now. And I feel like she could pull off those subtle hints that it brings it together more roundedly at the end. Whereas if it was a director like M. Night Shyamalan, you think that came out of nowhere. Catherine can carry that off, I think. I think that is so cool. Oh my gosh. And as well, when you said as well that the final kind of boss battle <laughs> was going to be between um, the the husband and wife. Oh my gosh. I was just picturing like the Matrix, like Sigourney <laughs> five bullets and kind of in slow-mo just Keanu like leaning backwards and <laughs> oh my gosh. That is sick. Oh, I, I love that. I love that. How cool would peak Sigourney Weaver, frizzy hair and Keanu Reeves oh Look together. <laughs> they would look the hair gods would be shining on <laughs> yes. it. Oh my! I love that idea. I need to see like edits. Do you know how like people edit um oh, videos yes. and stuff? People like looking like they're a couple. I need to see like Sigourney Weaver and Keanu Reeves like alternate hair goals. Oh my gosh, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. I think we both came up with really fun concepts there. I love you came up with the kind of mentor idea. I came up with the husband and wife revenge tale. Both really fun ideas. So great way to start this. Next genre we have is comedy. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. We both know what waits ahead of us here. Okay. Anna, would you like to list off the, the categories for this? So yes. I'm not talking too much. Let me just find them. Okay, so in the first bracket, we have the lead role for comedy. And we have, for $5 million, you can have Charlie Chaplin. For $4 million, you can have Robin Williams. For $3 million, you can have Sasha Baron Cohen. For $2 million, you can have Eddie Murphy. And for $1 million, you can have Rebel Wilson. James, who did you pick? I went with a guy who I think's who I think has very hit and miss comedy, but when he hits, he hits it out of the park, and he's a hero of satire, a legend of satire, and that's Sasha Baron Cohen for free. So it'll make more sense as I reveal more of my picks, but he's a very useful lead weapon for this film. What oh, about a you? lead weapon, Dad. Comedy <laughs> weapon. Oh, my. Um, I have chosen Robin Williams for four million. I just feel his comedy is so wholesome and he plays such good, wholesome characters in most of the comedy films. We won't talk about some of the scary ones and things. <laughs> um, so I just imagine him in my film as this lovely, lovely guy who has fallen on a, a hard time in his life, which again, I'll explain. But um, he will obviously prevail because he is a, a, a god. <laughs> for the second bracket, we have double acts. You can have Pryor and Wilder for five million. For four million, you can have Laurel and Hardy. For three million, you can have French and Saunders. For two million, you can have Kutcher and William Scott. And for one million, you can have the Wayan brothers. James, have so you with... got a, a top dog or a, a not a good dog? <laughs> <laughs> we should preface this by saying we have just watched Little Man together um, not together but on the for the podcast and I had them at the forefront of my mind and I thought you know what for the movie that I'm going to build these two might actually work with Sasha Baron Cohen so I picked the Wayne Brothers I'm hoping we get more white chicks than Little Man but I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure they're much better than each other. And it's the cheap option as well. So I managed to get a one million in so I can spend a bit more later on. Well, I have gone, I feel we're building complete opposite movies. I've gone kind of for another wholesome route and I've got spent another four million. So I've spent a total of eight million so far. And that is on Laurel and Hardy. Um, again, classic, classic. And I do see them in their peak playing these characters. Um, so just incredible kind of a funny double act who bounce off each other so well um, and I think it'll be interesting to see them working with Robin and to create this wholesome comedy film it would have been so fun if you to pick Laura and Hardy at the end of their careers as we see in Stan and Ollie and they can barely like move <laughs> and they don't like each other <laughs> and all that kind of stuff <laughs> uh, yeah that is funny although in another set in another film um that I have pitched on this I for this not the comedy section um I have used their the end of their film where they're doing their thing together as how the film will end because I, I just love that idea so much I love it yes for the third bracket we have the pet the animal in the film for five million dollars you can have Oogie the dog for four million you can have Crystal the monkey for three million you can have Babe the pig for two million, you can have Scrat from Ice Age. <laughs> and for one million, you can have Flipper. James, what is so funny? Who have you chosen? <laughs> I've chosen Scrat from Ice Age. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll explain towards the end, but I know it's animated, and it will still be animated in my film, because obviously you can't train a squirrel, whatever a Scrat is. Is he a squirrel? What is he? <laughs> he's a, he's a, like a, a saber-toothed squirrel. Yes, so obviously we can't get a real life saber to squirrel so it will just be scrapped from ice age animated well we're gonna have to work out schedules and things because i also want him for my film <laughs> okay <laughs> we've got a bidding war here i'm willing to go up to three million because because i've actually got one million left over in this budget really? so, <laughs> yes. well, i've spent all my money so i think you've got him <laughs> no i'm really interested to see especially if i as i've gone the more kind of wholesome comedy and you've gone the more kind of rude comedy how scrat is affected by that <laughs> <laughs> next bracket 
yeah, for bracket four, we have Celeb Cameo. And I, I love this one. For $5 million, you can have the man himself, Donald Trump. For, <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. For four million, you can have Queen Kim Kardashian. For three million, you can have Joe Exotic. For two million, you can have Big Ed. And for one million, you can have King Curtis. A fantastic selection, I feel. <laughs> I've gone with Kim Kardashian. Originally, was planning to have Donald Trump because my budget allowed for me to have Donald Trump. I was yeah. kind of gearing up towards that Sasha Baron Cohen, Donald Trump. He's going to ridicule him the whole way through. But then I thought, actually, no, wait a second. Kim Kardashian is a much better vehicle for Sasha Baron Cohen's humour. So I've gone with Kim K. That's really interesting. I have gone for Joe Exotic for three million. <laughs> as soon as I saw this, I was like, I want him. How can I build my film around? <laughs> so that, that is what I've done. You're just going to have to wait until I read my film out to, to know more. <laughs> it's such a shame there were no tigers in the pet bracket. But I guess he will be interacting with Scrat in some shape or form in this film you're gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> you're gonna have to wait and see <laughs> and then for the final bracket we have the directors for five million dollars you can have Mel Brooks for four million you can have uh <laughs> wait let me just give <laughs> Taiki Waititi what Taiki Waititi mm-hmm. for four million you can have Taiki Waititi well that just came <laughs> <off> my- <laughs> We're going with that. We're going with that. You just cough up that verbal. It's like, I can't believe it. For three million, you can have Olivia Wilde. For four million, you can have Adam Sandler. And for one million, you can have Tyler Perry. Game, who have you chosen? I've gone with Takawahiti. Um, again, I feel like, as I explained my movie, he just would work really well with Sasha Baron Cohen. So... It'll all, it'll all come together in a second when I explain my film, but I was very tempted to go with Tyler Perry and just make this completely crazy, but I stuck with a more solid option, someone who's had a very good recent track record of comedy movies. I'd say the best comedy director of the moment. Yeah. I was looking at these options, and I, I had enough money for actually the one I wanted, and it, it's Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> um. He obviously has some fantastic, well, if you could call them fantastic, funny films um, and some that aren't so great. But I was just picturing um, Happy Gilmore. Um, So I will explain that in a second. But James, after all of your choices, can you please pitch your film to us? Okay, so my, my film here is a bit more vague than the last because I'm depending very much on Sasha Baron Cohen here to pull the concept out. I'm basically giving him free range to come up with a character similar to Ali G, similar to Borat, to then really drive this movie and take it in whatever direction he likes, because I think that's when he's at his best. I think he's at his best when he's improv and when he's working in real-life situations. And compared to maybe a film like Grinsby which is scripted and it just turns into a bit of a crude mess I have signed up Kim Kardashian she doesn't know it's a comedy movie she doesn't know Sasha Baron Cohen's involved she thinks he's just going to be in a movie same with the Wayan Brothers and Sasha Baron Cohen is basically going to mess with them throughout this whole movie okay so he's gonna he's gonna toy with them a little bit he's gonna make them do silly things. And he's going to basically ridicule the type of humour that the Wayne brothers did, ridicule stuff like Little Man, and ridicule maybe the reality TV style life that Kim Kardashian has. So I'm really giving Sasha Baron Cohen free range here. And obviously he'll have Taka Wahiti there to back him up, who I think is someone who understands satire, as we saw in Jojo Rabbit. So the two of those two will be lethal and for my pet, Scrat, I'm just going to have random sections of the film where Scrat's hunting for an acorn. It's not It's not <laughs> going to have anything to do with the plot of the movie. I'm just going to cut to him looking for an acorn. That no explanation. Brilliant. We paid for him. That's what he's best at. I'm not going to take him out of his comfort zone. That's what he's going to be doing. I love that. I think that's so funny. And I think that's the thing sometimes with comedy, that it is all about kind of letting the actors have free reign because 
they are funny and that's it if they create a character they know what that character would do I think you have chosen some a fabulous mix and I, I love the idea of just every now and then we see Scrat just <laughs> digging for an, <laughs> for an acorn will this be a similar will it be a full animated section for Scrat where the full thing is animated or will it appear that he is in the same kind of environment that the other characters are in whether we see them or not but he is still looking for acorns that's a great question. He is in, he's not in the Ice Age environment. He is in the LA environment, which I'm guessing where this film takes place. I mean, the guy doesn't have much acting range, let's be honest. His whole career has, <laughs> <Yeah>. been, <laughs> has been desperately trying to pry acorns out of ice. So we're not going to ask too much of him. We're just going to say, look, this acorn stuck in Kim Kardashian's jewelry box, pull it out. And it's just going to be, we're going to pan from Kim going, oh why where's my handbag to scrap in a handbag trying to yank it out of the corner <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant that is such a good idea Anna I'm very intrigued to see I'm guessing a far more wholesome one than my ridiculously crude movie yeah so I was picturing the Adam Sandler movie being like like Happy Gilmore like Click um someone has obviously is happy with their life but feels that they could make it better um so we have robin williams who has sadly been left by his wife um and one day he's he's very sad so he just goes to play golf and he's just playing when he sees some rustling in the trees um, and there's a commotion (laughs) i've written a commotion and it appears to be two men played by laurel and hardy wrestling with what appears to be a big squirrel played by (laughs) played by scrap Okay, and then I've put this bit in, like, quotation marks. The three set up a mini King Kong ape wonder of the world style thing. (laughs) And people pay to come and see the saber-toothed squirrel. And even, even Joe Exotic pops by and he sings a tune about it, which he he makes up a little diddly-diddly-diddly on the spot, like, I saw a squirrel and a squirrel saw a man. Like that style thing. But then the full song will be the credit song, like, fully mastered, beautiful. Um, Obviously, back to before it ends um robin and his pals they're doing great they have some good laughs they like have meals and they're they're just living their best lives being funny together making jokes at one point scrap might try and escape and they've got to find him in the dead of night um and they're they're raking in the cash um however one day the ex-wife comes along with her new guy and sees how good robin is doing and she begs to come back to him but he says no that he's happy with his new life and his friends uh, and then we we hear the Joe Exotic song. And I have decided that if there is a sequel, um, the three BFFs, Robin, Williams, Laurel and Hardy, decide that they want Scrat to be happy and they try and find his family so they can release him into the wild. So whether there's like a world tour, like Scrat on tour or something, I don't know. But I I like the idea. I think you've crafted a far more coherent, wholesome film than i have i would actually really like to see that and i think the combination of robin williams lauren hardy would be epic i think that's such a good combination he robin williams especially would have had such a good time with those two i think because he would have just been able to unleash his all of his acting muscles do some dancing do he would have loved it it's quite funny because I feel that I chose for the lead and the double act four million dollars each, which obviously adds up to eight, which is a lot. So it means for the rest, I only have a small amount. But actually, it worked out really well because the others that I actually wanted, like I wanted Adam Sandler. He was two, Joe Exotic three, and I thought that he was the perfect cameo. And Scrat, I was like, he's two, he, he's it, he's it. I mean, Joe Exotic is very at the moment, and you'd be able to merchandise the heck out of his music on this film. Heck yeah. You are building here something that could be a Disney vehicle. I feel like Disney would have want this. <laughs> yeah, I would even plan the sequel if they want that. But I just think it'd be such a wholesome, good film. And with the Adam Sandler style, I, I think it would work really well. OK, another fun round. We are now on to horror. I, I love my horror one so much. <laughs> Brilliant. That's what I love to hear. OK. OK, for horror... Bracket number one, we have more classic actors and then obviously a few more jokey ones thrown in. For five million, you can have Boris Karloff. For four, you can have Jack Nicholson. For three, you can have Jamie Lee Curtis. For two, 
you can have Madonna, and for one, you can have Pamela Anderson. Anna, what have you gone for? I have done another four million there, and um, I have Jack Nicholson in my film. Um, I think that he is fantastic, and I imagine him being very um, shining, one flew over the cuckoo, well, cuckoo, I was going to say cuckoo's nest, cuckoo's nest, <laughs> um, <laughs> being quite um, a strong character, but with flaws and things that eat into his brain, and he 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 knows what's best. But there is always something niggling away that could be a bad thing for, for him and the rest of the characters in the film. Interesting. I've gone for Jamie Lee Curtis. I feel like she's a very... I, 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 going for, Honestly, here, I was just trying to keep my cost down a little bit. And I feel like she's a very she's cheap, solid... Yeah. She's a solid <laughs> three million choice, OK? She knows how to lead a horror movie. Yeah, that's pretty much it. She knows how to lead a horror movie. As you'll find out when I unwind my story, she's Ooh, not that integral. Okay. She's not that integral, OK? Oh. Just a solid choice here. Bracket number two are more current stars. So we have Bill Skarsgård for five, Anya Taylor-Joy for four, Lupita Nyong'o for three, Taylor Lautner for two, and Rob Schneider for one. Anna, <laughs> please tell me you didn't go for Rob Schneider. No, I spent $3 million on Lupita. I think that he, she is she is so cool and... I love what she's in, even though it fills me with fear, and I cannot wait to see what she's in next. Um, I think that she brings so much to the table, and I love her facial expressions um, and just what she does to characters. I, I think she's brilliant, so I have chosen her. I think she, for the movie that I'm going to create, she would have been a really good choice, but I have just gone for Anya Taylor-Joy just because I think she would suit the more sci-fi horror film I'm going for. Because she does have, the, as we've discussed in the podcast before, she has this more alien aspect to her, alien qualities to her her visual look. Um, so that will maybe become more clear in a second, but I think great choice by you. Bracket number three, as so many horror films have child actors in, we've gone with child actors. So these are, again, we're thinking maybe you're picking them as child actors, but if you really want to have them grown up, you can, but... We are thinking them as child actors. So for five, you can you can have Haley Joel Osment. For four, you can have Millie Bobby Brown. For three, you can have for three million, you can have Quaven Wallace from Beast of the Southern Wild. Tremendous child actor performance that was. For two, you can have Jonathan Lipnick, most famous from Stuart Little. By the way, can I just say I used to despise him in those movies. <laughs> <laughs> and for one, you can have Honey Boo Boo, famous reality TV star. Anna, who have you gone for? Well, I, I was flicking through who to choose. There are some good options here. I chose Quiven Wallace for three million. And you will see why when I explain my story. But okay. I, I'm glad to have chose her. chosen her, even if I choose the correct grammar. <laughs> and I've gone for Honey Boo Boo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Keeping costs down. Okay. Bracket four, we have the creature for your movie. So for five million, you can have Jaws. For four million, you can have Alien. For three million, you can have Anaconda. For two, you can have Shrek. And for one million, you can go with Barney the Dinosaur. <laughs> and uh, have you been ambitious here and gone with Shrek or Barney? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I've chosen Barney the dinosaur. Oh. There is a reason, and I cannot wait to like literally I, explain my story. You have flooded my brain with ideas because I can now picture an awesome horror movie with these different components you've put together. So I'm super int I'm so excited to hear your final pitch now. Thank you, thank you. I've got say that I I have made the like graphic things for this. So like when we post them on Instagram or whatever, I have made those. And I I hate Googling scary things. So when I had to find the picture for the first three, so Jaws, Alien wasn't so bad, and Anaconda, I was like, okay, get this done ASAP so I can get my <laughs> away from these horrible pictures. So just Googling Jaws shark. Go, 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 go. Do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I don't know what it is, but does anyone else like pictures? Not that they're not going to come to life or whatever. That's a stupid thing. But you, it's like that's a scary thing, and I don't want to be looking at it because it just fills your brain with fright. Maybe it's just me being a scaredy cat, but that that was a scary thing to do. Yeah, they can haunt you for the rest of the day. It's it's troubling. Okay, I'm so excited to hear that. Oh my word. Okay, your I <laughs> I have gone for Alien. Now I think this pretty much now explains what my whole movie is, but. I'll explain in further detail in a moment. The final bracket is the director. For five million, you can have Jordan Peele. For four million, you can have Ari Aster. For three million, you can have Jennifer Kent, who's the director of Babadook. And for two million, you can have Seth Rogen. And for one million, you can have Ozzy Osbourne, which would um, be great. Yeah, that would be so funny, <laughs> like a rock and roll horror. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wanted Jordan Peele. I feel for my type of film, he would have done it, what, like, word on it was to describe. But I didn't have enough, so I went with Ari Aster. And I don't feel it's a downgrade from Jordan Peele at all, but I do feel it would be very different films. I was getting ready this morning, and I was just like, hmm, imagine, like, Jordan Peele doing Midsummer, and then imagine Ari Aster doing Us or something. Like, I feel that they've both got very distinct tastes. So what what I've thought of for my film, it is very Jordan Peele, but I think that Ari Aster would do it a fantastic job. So I have chosen him. And I'm not sad about it. I do feel that my story is more of Jordan Peele story, but I love the fact that I'm mixing it up and having Ari Aster do it instead because I feel that he just add this scariness to times when it isn't even scary, which I hate because <laughs> horror is scary. But I absolutely love that. What about you? I think there's not much between, as you say, Jordan Peele, Ari Aster and Jennifer Kent. I mean, Jennifer Kent's only free because she's had fewer films released. And yeah. I mean, Babadook's her main horror film, whereas Ari Aster and Jordan Peele both had two huge hits. So that's why the pricing is as it is. And I've gone with Jennifer Kent and I'll explain why. Maybe let's launch into our pictures straight away. If you haven't worked out already, I'm doing another Alien movie. Yes, another Alien movie, but I'm going very much back to the first really Scott Alien movie, Claustrophobia. We have got Jamie Lee Curtis' character, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Honey Boo Boo Child, a family in a spaceship on a journey. <laughs> on a journey <laughs> just honey Boo Boo. Like okay, a okay. Style. I'm going to address this. Okay, so what we've got here is... The way I've got around Honey Boo Boo Child being in this film and having to feature her in some way is they're all in sleep pods as this movie starts. And Honey Boo Boo Child, we see her for a moment, but then she goes missing. And only later in the film do we see she's in an alien pod. Because I don't want her saying a word. I don't want her overshadowing anything. I don't want her going, Honey Boo Boo Child, want, want space bacon or something like that. I don't want any of that, okay? I don't want any of that. Okay, so... She's just going to be in there and out of there. Maybe she's a great actress. I I don't know. I've only seen clips and memes of her online, so I'm not sure. Jamie Lee Curtis, I say, she'll be featured for maybe the first half an hour of this film. Her and Anya Taylor-Joy looking for Honey Boo Boo Child <laughs> all over the spaceship. And then she gets picked off, and then we, are, we narrow down to Anya Taylor-Joy versus Alien. And I am just depending here on Anna Taylor Joy's pure acting chops to maybe have a Sigourney Weaver moment herself and really pull out a performance here that carries the movie and does something maybe different with this role than Sigourney did and other actresses or actors in similar roles have done. And I really wanted Jennifer Kent as well because in The Babadook, what she does so brilliantly is she, she deals in claustrophobia so well and I think what we could have with this film is a, a more cerebral element than the original Alien where it is very much a uh, hunter versus hunted action how are we going to trap her I feel like with Anya Taylor-Joy we could have maybe a lot more psychology going on here um, her maybe battling with insanity here uh, as we see the lead character in The Babadook does and we could maybe have more of a psychological horror going on here. I think there's a lot of interesting things to be played with. 
I think that is so interesting. And I like how you've taken like a classic horror film, yet put it in a more modern day setting. Because I think with modern day films, we do look at more psychological things and getting into your heads. And then you walk away from the film and you feel kind of it has leached into your brain. I, I really love that. And I think it's so interesting with the the people you've chosen. And I love that. Just get rid of Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> start literally. <laughs> you would be the first to go. <laughs> I, would, I would just be so worried that this film is great, but then it gets memed the living daylights of Honey Boo Boo child in her sleeping pod. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets memed forever. So oh my God. it's a big gamble. It is a big gamble. It could ruin the whole entire movie. Or Honey Boo Boo child can just be disposed of very quickly. No one even yeah. notices it's her. Okay, Anna, I can't wait, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm actually so excited. This is, like, I love all of my film, like, things. I'd, I'd make them and watch them all. Not to, like, toot my own horn, but I'm actually so proud of this one. Okay, so. <clears throat> Jack Nicholson plays Barney's manager. So it's set in, like, modern day, trying to get him back onto the kids' entertainment scene after years of it not going so well. They think um, it good to have a nostalgia episode where they have kids who were on the show um, to come back on as grown-ups and see, like, say to Barney, oh, my dreams have come true. Thanks for helping me, Barney. Um, so we have this film kind of in two parts. Well, not two parts, but it's filmed in two sections and then they overlap and stuff. So we have the past and the first, one of the first episodes that was made. And we have Kavain playing a young girl and then we have Lupita playing the older version of her. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. So I was like, oh my God, this is, this is perfect. So we have, we see that she was on the show and we see then after being on the show, she's obviously like, uh, all the friends are so jealous because she's had this amazing like opportunity to meet Barney in real life. But then for some reason, like she keeps having strange dreams and Barney's always in the dream. So when um, Jack approaches her and is like yo we're redoing them when she's older she's felt that she's always needed closure for some reason so she goes on the show but for some reason this time Barney when the show is finished leaves and for some reason can just see Lapita and his dreams and nightmares and stuff and I don't know if to ruin children's dreams whether we see the man who plays Barney underneath the costume or if Barney is just like a, a thing <laughs> <laughs> Barney is actually the existing thing. Um, I haven't cho- decided that yet. Um, but I love this idea that they're both kind of disturbed by each other, but they're not sure what links them together. Um, and I've put some questions here. Is it the manager always around being quite sneaky or the return of a familiar face who has always likely been on his mind that causes this thing? But whatever the case, no one in this story is happy and may not get the happy endings they want. So whether... Jack Nicholson has been kind of, um, I don't know, put in their minds to to work with each other or they're somehow connected, a bit like um, how in Us they're kind of connected uh, with people in a different world. Um, but I like the idea of Ari Aster like approaching kind of, I don't know, stuff like um, odd festivals and events and things that have taken place or even like star signs and stuff that these people Oh, well, this person and a dinosaur are connected, but they're not sure why. And everything's quite creepy and mystical. Yeah, a bit like Midsummer, it's still quite childish and bright colours and things, because that's what you'd expect from Barney. But I just love the idea that we see the young Barney with the young girl and then the older girl with the now current Barney. But Jack Nicholson just always kind of creeping around and doing odd things. So there we go. That That is my story. A director like Ari Aster as well would leave so many interesting clues and it would be such an interesting build just trying to pick up things going on, trying to unravel this insane story. And then to have Jack Nicholson as the kind of puppet master creepy figure going for this film. Wow. Okay, that is spooky. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Wow. Okay, I think that's so impressive that you've managed to take Barney... (laughs) <laughs> and create something incredibly compelling. <laughs> well, I just pictured, you know, like a a, a, a movie character, well, not even, like, yeah, a movie character who's kind of lo- lost out on the times and isn't popular anymore. Like, me and my sister had all the Barney videos. She had a Barney, Teddy, we loved them so much. But now no one really knows him apart from a meme. So just imagine, like, it opens with Barney looking in, like, a dressing room mirror being like, no one loves me anymore. <laughs> and then Jack comes in and puts his hand on his shoulder like, 
don't worry kid like we're, we're gonna sort this out for you like we'll, we'll figure it out like let's put on a show let's sort this out and then he gets on the phone and and calls Lapita and then suddenly we're transported back to her as a child being on the Barney show and it's like wow this is actually a good idea <laughs> <laughs> there we go Ari Astor if you're listening I would like a second portion of the profit but other than that <laughs> go mental <laughs> Okay, the final genre we have is musical. So for the first bracket, we have retro. These are people who aren't necessarily in the modern day musicals we see, but we all know and love the things that they've been in. So for 5 million, you can have Fred Astaire. For 4 million, you can have Doris Day. For 3 million, you can have John Travolta. For 2 million, you can have Frank Sinatra. And for 1 million, you can have Elvis Presley. James, who have you chosen? I've gone with, I really wrestled back and forth on this. This genre I found the most challenging to try and craft a coherent film here. But I went with Doris Day. I love Clamity Jane. I have a real soft spot for Doris Day. A very wholesome, golden Hollywood performer. Doris Day is my pick. How about you, Anna? Again, like the, the Barney horror film, you're just going to have to go with me. And then when I've revealed all my, listen to my film... Um, but I've gone with one million Elvis Presley. Interesting, because in the sense, looking at this, at this bracket, the musical talent talent does not diminish at all in this bracket. It's just the acting quality. You've still got a great musician there. He's just not necessarily a great actor. Yeah, and that that's it. That's one of the things that is part of my part of my film, um, and Elvis. I want him, it's going to be a set in modern day, and sadly Elvis is no longer with us, but we have to imagine that he is, and he's about 70, 80, I think he'd be about 80 now. Um, so we've just got to picture him as that, someone who is fantastic singing, has had this incredible career, um, but yeah, hasn't had much acting experience. <laughs> ah, so you're doing elderly Elvis, not peak yeah. sex bomb Elvis. Okay, interesting. Yeah. That's it, he's going to have to wait and see. <laughs> okay, for bracket two, we have more current stars. Jamie Foxx for five, Cynthia Aviro for four, Zac Efron for three, Miley Cyrus for two, and Russell Crowe, famous for his performance in Les Mis, for one. I have gone with Miley Cyrus, who hasn't had the best success rate with movies, but I'm giving her a shot here to really prove herself. How about you? Um, I have gone for the five million option, and that is Jamie Fox. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I re- Okay. I had so many different options here. One of them was to do Elvis and Jamie Fox. I did really want a film with Jamie Fox in, but I was annoyed at myself for putting for five million because it's like I can't spend five million here. <laughs> um, well, hopefully, with the film I've done, I'll, I'll do him justice for you. I hope so. A bracket number three, we have a musician, a famous musician who can have a role in this film. Five million, you can have Taylor Swift. Four million, you can have Katy Perry. Three million, you can have Eminem. Two million, you can have Susan Boyle. And for one million, you can have the lead singer of a song called Friday, which got memed all over the internet, Rebecca Black. Did you know she's released a song called Saturday? I like a not... few years ago it was a few years ago but she oh, released okay. a song called saturday so I... we we have closure <laughs> if i'm right she's she's actually doing quite well for herself now i think she's just a youtuber and she's i mean she seems to have quite a good career going so good for her i mean yeah, that her. must have been real tough to go through as a as a young teen just being shot into superstardom for a bad song but hey you could have a movie role here and she will because i've casted her in my movie oh that is exciting. I want Rebecca Black Friday, full Friday mode. Oh my gosh, I love that. I have chosen Taylor Swift for five million. Whoa. Um, so I, whoa, 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 whoa. So you spent, you spent ten and ten. So you spent, sorry, five and five. You spent ten in the last So I've spent years. ten. And it's, but you've got to think, I put Elvis, at, which is one. Mm-hmm. So I spent eleven so far. So I have four million left for the last two <laughs> But again, it all makes sense in my mind. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I have chosen Taylor Swift. I think that she, I love Katy Perry. Katy Perry is my queen. But I think that Taylor Swift does write the 
better kind of story ballady musical songs um and that is the reason i've chosen her interesting okay for the fourth bracket we have a writer so who's going to write this musical obviously an incredibly important proponent of this for five you can have stephen soderheim for four you can have andrew lloyd webber for three you can have lynn manuel miranda for two you can have justin bieber and for one you can have Katie Price writing your musical, who's just a great musician, isn't she? Yeah, she's uh, fab, like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I have gone for Lynn manuel Miranda. He's kind of of the moment. Obviously, Hamilton and In the Heights. And I'm pretty sure he's doing a, bu- he's doing a bunch of movies as well. He's definitely transitioned in the movies. I'm trusting him here. To be honest, I wasn't... I was never going to pick Andrew Lloyd Webber and Stephen Sondheim was out of my budget. So it had to be Lynn. Um, I have chosen the same. I think that his musicals are great and they have such a great kind of story to them, but they're also so funny, um, which le- links to my story. So that's why I've chosen him. Uh, and the fifth and final bracket is dance choreographer. So who's going to, piece together those elaborate dance sequences if you're going to have them in your film for five million you can have gene kelly for four you can have justin timberlake for three you can have shakira for two you can have jim carrey and one danny devito i have gone with gene kelly i wanted to save my budget up so i could spend big on gene kelly because for me the musical the dance components of a great musical i'm going to go for more of a classic musical need to be on point so i think just with that alone i'm gonna have a beautiful piece of dance art at the very least i only had one million left i actually wanted jim carrey <laughs> which is like insane but so i've, I've had to go with danny devito <laughs> the only time i've seen danny devito dance is in an episode of friends have you ever watched friends um, I've seen little bits, but I've never seen him in that. I just imagine him being like quite odd and like just bobbing and waving his hands around and stuff. In Friends, he plays a aged stripper. And oh my god! He's thrusting people, and all kinds of stuff. So that's the level of dancing you're going to get in your musical. Okay, would you like to pitch your musical first, or should I go first? Um, I don't mind going first. Okay, mm, go so, ahead. Um, I. First of all, I need you to imagine that Elvis is playing um, someone who was on like off-Broadway shows and sees himself as this big performer, but has never actually had his big break. And it's quite sad, really. But he's saved all of his money, all of his life and has written a musical based on his career. But obviously, he hasn't had much of a career. Jamie Foxx is Jamie Foxx and Elvis has raised enough money to get Jamie to play him in the musical um so after auditioning jamie fox is chosen and this film is very break the fourth wally um and like aware of itself but also the musical is about putting on a musical um so you've just got to kind of get in that vibe um and elvis doesn't want it to be a typical musical so we have beautiful ballads thanks to taylor and the story is hilarious down to lynn manuel but Obviously, with Danny DeVito on the moves, we see kind of a more odd performance. And we do just see the two characters we have for the whole thing, Elvis and Jamie. Elvis is being like, I want you to be doing this and this. And Jamie's like, "Uh, we we don't do that anymore. Like, what what are you doing? (laughs) Um, But obviously, we see them kind of grow together to build this odd performance but it's also quite a dramatic one and I want the lead stars to teach each other things um and opening night is only a few days away but it still feels quite very far from finished um and this is the one that I want to end how Stan and Ollie end where they just decide this is not going well at all um let's just do it together on stage so the two perform together on stage and it's funny and beautiful and also extremely odd but it is delightful um and yeah we we have it with them on stage together doing their thing like stan and ollie do at the end of that film because i love that um and i think with the the songs it'll be fantastic and over the top and beautiful but with the rest of it it will just be like a bit of chaos 
but they're, they're very aware of that if that makes sense um and I think that it will be a beautiful yet odd thing that will either be stuck in your head for years and you'll love it or you'll never want to witness it with your eyes again yeah I see it's quite a beautiful piece but also a very odd mix I really like that Anna that was like you say emotional but I can see a lot of humor in there I think Jamie Foxx playing off aged Elvis oh, yeah. would be oh, hilarious and he's like what we don't we don't do that anymore <laughs> <laughs> and then just Danny DeVito is, is Danny DeVito is he going to have an on-screen role or is he just dance choreography here? I think so Elvis hasn't had much experience so Elvis is playing an, El- an older man who has not done very well in his career but is wanting to show the world that he has by creating this musical so I think Danny DeVito has whispered in his ear kind of before they've gone on to set like this is the kind of thing you need to be doing like you don't know what you're doing but I do like you need to be doing this and this and this kind of thing so when they're on like filming and Elvis is doing all this like Jamie Foxx I want it to be as well a bit ad-libbed where a bit like an outnumbered where some half of them are given a script and the other half have to improvise so whether Elvis is the script and they've just told Jamie Foxx like it's just a bit of fun you know the songs kind of but how you get to each one you'll just have to interact with Elvis to find out so he'll be very like what is going on um and very like how it would be if he was asked to play someone in a (laughs) musical that was so odd (laughs) that sounds like a wild time my musical plays off some real life stuff so I have Doris Day as the mother of Miley Cyrus and Miley is peak of wrecking ball wild child Miley and the two have grown apart Miley's off the rails a little bit and Doris obviously this very wholesome figure just can't understand why her daughter's like this way and she wishes her daughter was more like Rebecca Black Miley's old high school friend and the film is basically Doris Day trying to entice Miley back to a more wholesome life and Miley rebelling against that and the two trying to meet in the middle somewhere and then and then it does crescendo with this beautiful dance piece where both of them understand each other and they come together and they perform this beautiful dance together and these mother and daughter hug and they resolve their issues and they continue a life together where they both accept each other's flaws and celebrate each other's wonderful aspects. And I think Lynn is such a wonderful writer. I think he'd be able to pull that off wonderfully. And obviously Jean would have that final important dance sequence down to a T. So I feel like, again, a really wholesome film celebrating mothers and daughters. I love that. I think that's such a beautiful thing. When I was in college, um, I went to like a dance thing where they the dance students showed their performances and this girl for her final performance had taught her mum a dance and they did it together um to oh what's it called um the the abba song where it's a school bag in hand she leaves home in the early morning so it's very an emotional song anyway but the fact that she was dancing this with her mum and it was like that how these two people were very different and one wanted to go this way whereas the other one was wanting to go this way but it was how they could see each other the mum was helping her daughter and the daughter didn't need to rebel as much and it was so beautiful and the audience were crying and I hope that like she got like A's and A stars because it was beautiful but it really made me think of that how um people do grow up and be different and I love that how you've got this really wholesome mother figure who I can just imagine singing these fantastic songs looking out the window whilst drying a plate or something (laughs) (laughs) with a tea towel and and Miley Cyrus going off and being crazy um and with Rebecca Black on on the tunes I I think that's really cool I I really like the idea yeah, I think there's a lot of fun to be had, kind of push and pull between the two, and then Rebecca back playing the almost comedic fall foil between the two. I do worry slightly Lin Manuel. His lyrics are very wordy. If you we've seen Hamilton and In the Heights, they're quite, like I can say, uh, wordy, almost hip hop ish. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, that's my biggest concern with this film. I would, I would really loved um, Stephen Soderheim, but I do feel like. Lynn's such a well-educated musician that he'd be able to do the old school of Doris Day and then the more new school, edgy music of Miley. So that's what I'm hoping he can cut between those two lines. 
Okay. That is the end of our fantasy picks. And may I say, that's probably the most enjoyable podcast we've done. I love doing that. That was so much fun. It was so nice to, like, think of our own films, but have kind of restrictions, but at the same time, just have fun with it and not be like, oh, I can't afford this person. That makes me really angry. It's like, actually, this is a challenge. I'll take Barney the Dinosaur and see what I can do. This has been so much fun. I've actually enjoyed this so much. There's so much fun in actually coming up with your own picks but then just hearing your picks as well and imagining those films was just as fun so yeah and as well hearing yours and just seeing how different they are because you think oh it's obvious that they're going to go for this this and this because they're like the best ones but then actually people see different people doing different things and imagine it in different ways so it's so interesting to hear two completely different film options for each option it was it was really cool to hear those Most definitely. I would love to hear other people's ones. We're going to post the graphics on Instagram and elsewhere. And hopefully, yeah, people will come up with their own picks and their own ideas. I can't believe we did a horror round and neither of us picked a lockdown COVID-19 horror film. Yeah. Like that would have been a really interesting thing to pitch, but maybe it's too soon. Um, (laughs) Anyway, I think we should do this again very soon because we should we should it's, there's it's plenty more genres to do plenty more genres to do plenty more fun to be had and yeah that was awesome yeah it was <laughs> okay we will speak to you all next week goodbye yep thank you for listening goodbye